debunking rebreather myths, which for me is that they are very dangerous. So, are they dangerous? Before we get to any of that, I have something really exciting to tell you guys. I, oi, oi, there we go. Okay, there are two dive expeditions now coming up. I just finalized them. So you can dive with me in the Los Cabos area in December of 2023, that's this year, coming up very, very soon. It is perfect for all levels and it is more of a budget-friendly, simple trip. Okay, based out of Cabo San Lucas. The other trip, and I cannot wait for this, cannot wait. I'm taking a group to Socorro. Okay, that's happening in January, 2024. So this is like bucket list dive destination. This is only for advanced divers and I absolutely cannot wait to go. <laughs> All of the details are on my website. So I'll link that in the description below. And, and that's it, that's it. We're getting back to the video. Go, go, go. Every single accident that happens in the past few years, all of them they are human error. They need more discipline. With open circuit, you can get along with many things, like a small leak on our rim, like not washing the equipment, <laughs> who do that? But with a rebreather, if something was wrong, the thing is that it's gonna be like a way worse than something going wrong with a open circuit. But if you follow the checklist... Like this? Yeah. Like this. Bam, bam, bam. Chan, chan. Chan, chan. If you follow your, your checklist to assemble the unit, then as soon as you get in the water on your computer, you do your check. You check the entire unit. You have here the points to go through. And underwater, you check your controllers. You do your cells test and you flash oxygen, the lawyer, to run some tests on the unit of them, it's safe, it's perfectly safe. But that's the only thing, when you have a problem, if you don't react on time, it could be a fatality. What happens? One of the last accidents happened like a couple of years ago in Hawaii. A diver on a rebreather uh, died at the surface. He jumped in the water with the loop on, okay, just breathing on the rebreather, he has the oxygen cylinder closed. Mm. He didn't open the cylinder. Oh. So he went uh, hypoxic. Yeah. He was breathing the same loop. Didn't even realize it. Didn't even realize it. Passed out. Passed out at the surface. No so, freaking way. Yeah. That's wild. That's wild, but <laughs> you have a checklist that said, is the uh, oxygen open? Then in the computer, on the body check that you do with your check with your bodies, mm -hmm. one of them is a valve. One of them, not the first one, is valve and SPGs. So you check the valves; they are open. Yeah. Uh, so as long as you follow the protocols, it's, it's fine. It's a stupid mistake to jump with a with an open circuit. How many times did you jump with a closed tank? I jumped plenty. You a yeah. lot. I not a lot for me, to yeah. be honest. For me, I'm but I'm neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just breathe a couple of times, and then it's like <gasps> shit. You open the bottle, <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, but don't do that. It's a bad habit. I know. <laughs> but here, okay, course director. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot my position. <laughs> they are safe as long as you follow the checklist and the checks and body checks. You start to have a problem with the system and you just immediately go to the bailout? Yeah, it's, it's not wrong to bail out. So as soon as you have gurgling, gurgling. Yeah, gurgling on the loop. Yeah. That means something is wrong. Water is getting inside. You bail out. You close the loop, you bail out, and then you figure it out. We have a problem with the controller. Like the PO2 is going crazy. You bail out and then you figure it out. So okay. as soon as you bail out, you're fine. Are some of the problems fixable during the dive or do you is that like a automatic cancel the dive? No, the the idea of the philosophy is to stay on the loop as much as you can. Because that is gonna short down the uh, decompression stops, for all means it's not wrong to bail out. But you can fix a lot of problems on the fly. 
you can even run the unit manually if mm. you have a problem with the electronics. Imagine that your controller just for whatever reason stopped working. You have the hood and if you feel comfortable like counting the cycles on the PO2 that you are breathing, I would prefer mm, to end a decompression dive on my rebreather counting the PPO2 on my hood than bailing out and have, and have to do long decompression. Wow. I can't even imagine. I feel like you would just go cross-eyed, like looking <laughs> at that little thing in front of your face. I mean, I just took the, the course uh, from beginner, from recreational. It's not a, like a recreational, it's a air diluent, is the name of the course, up to uh, Heliox, it's for trimix. We run many scenarios, like failure with the computer, with the oxygen, with the uh, bailout, everything. So you need to run the unit manually, and another one you need to be like counting the cycles on the on the hood. So you practice. Makes sense. Yeah. Like any other yeah. skill that you would do in open circuit. Yeah. That's cool. What about dive accidents with your buddy? So like what happens if they have a total failure? Are you able to kind of buddy breathe or like do something with your bailout? Like is that kosher? Yeah. When you plan a dive with uh, even if it's for recreational, uh, you need to plan the dive uh, based on the gas that you breathe, your sac or your uh, RMB. RMB. <laughs> but here is a little bit different because you calculate on the unit, you calculate the gas that you breathe based on the oxygen that your body metabolizes, not on your volume of air, the volume of gas that you move, because you are moving the same volume of air. Yeah. So it's about the oxygen that your body metabolizes. But then for the bailout, you need to calculate uh, the liters, the volume. Yeah, the volume that you will need to end the dive, sharing with somebody in stress. So you add that extra on your bailout, just in case you need to share. You take more than what you need in case you need to also bail out your buddy. Yeah. Ooh. But the statistics of Two people on rebreather bailing out at the same time is one into a, a million. Calculating your oxygen, that sounds complicated. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have tables and smart people somewhere doing that <laughs> things for us. <laughs> so I won't be making a video on it. <laughs> no, but based on the tables, like a regular size, like adult, metabolize. 0.9 liter of oxygen per minute okay. when diving. And 1.1 uh, when you are in motion. Wow. Do you want to put this together? I'm not going to go through the no. checklist, but I'm going to just put it together to see how the, yeah. the unit looks. Let's check it out. Something really cool that we have here. Yeah, something nice. This is a water trap. Water trap? Yeah, water trap. For moisture? For moisture. Ah. Yeah. And when you dump it at the end of a couple of dives, everything that is here is kind of grows from your lungs. No! Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty gross. Okay, so what does that look like for a healthy person? Is it kind of like cloudy and gross? It is. It's kind of greenish. Ew! Uh, yeah. It's kind of gross. What about for a smoker? I I don't even want to know. <laughs> uh, <that's it. laughs> that sounds so gnarly. Oh my god. Wow. So, seriously? Yeah, I can't. Okay. It's impossible. No, so come can, on. Now let me bring a screwdriver. There you go. Careful. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what? what did you just do? Damn it, open up for me. <laughs> I feel like we're cavemen. Just what? like, open up! <laughs> we did it! We did it! <laughs> Just down a little bit. So would you say that these are safer units now? Like, than maybe 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. It there's has, more redundancy, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, more redundancy.
And so this is the scrubber. Mm -hmm. How to make sure everything's yeah. lined up. It's like up and lock. Lock. So here is where the scrubber is connected to the counter lamps. Finicky little thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. There you go, you got it. Yeah. So what kinds of things will fail besides getting water in the system? Most of them, they are related with uh, water or humidity in the system. Mm -hmm. Because moisture will mess with the cells. They will read like not accurate or they will go crazy. In that case, you bail out. Another one is a chemical burn on the airways. Ooh. If water goes all the way into the scrubber, if you put water on the scrubber, uh -huh. <gasps> they will react chemically and, and release the like, chemical gas. Ooh. So you can get a burn on the airways. That's scary. It is. Here on both sides, I forgot to show you, but we have also a couple of water traps to avoid that. Okay. But, if, but that could happen. But that's why you have to be like really fast when something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Wow. When, when the cells goes crazy or the uh, controller goes crazy, that means only one thing. That is water on the unit. Mm. How much? We don't know. Could be just moisture on the cells or oh, that happened to Marisa, the, our instructor. She got her unit floated in Socorro last year because the counter lamp here got delaminated. You know, it's, it's laminated on the, yeah. on the connection. It was a malfunction from the manufacturer, so that came out and everything was closed, the circuit, the loop, everything, but she was getting water through here. And then the cells start to break crazy, she bailed out, and the unit was broken. You can let the units drive yeah, the, the cells. Oh. So open everything. The problem if it's salt water, with time, the connections, the cables, they're gonna get corroded. Mm. Yeah, and you do replace them. You're not good at this uh, get ready with me because you can't talk and get no. ready at the same time. No, that's too much. <laughs> that's the disco that's worm. That's the disco worm. <laughs> disco worm. <laughs> How often would you say people have to bail out? Like, it seems like there's so many places where you could have bubbles and leaks and all kinds of stuff. I would say you have way more or rings and connections yeah. that in uh, recreational. But when you have a problem with the unit, normally you get mechanical problems on the recreational parts of the unit, like LPI connections, right. hoses. Okay. They are from recreational. Yeah. The valves. Here inside you have like a regulator, like the level from a regulator. Those ones are the things that fell on the right. system, the ones. Not like the sensors and all the fancy yeah. pant stuff. Yeah. Chop them out. Chop them out. <laughs> and you want to tell them why the things are green? Because they are oxygen clean, oxygen compatible. I don't know if you will see later on camera, like the O-rings and all the connections, they have like a white grease on it. It's not dirt, it's not salt, it's a crystal loop. It's the lubricant uh, oxygen compatible. So everything is uh, yeah, lubricated with the crystal loop. And why is that since we were talking about safety? Because the risk of fire, explosion, we cannot use any grease. How do you say derivado del petróleo? Derived from petroleum. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like Pure breaks. oxygen is boom stuff. Yeah, Things go boom. That's the technical term. <laughs> That's it. Sick. That's really not heavy. No, it's not heavy. Like it's weird on the water. But for buoyancy, it's way easier than with other units. Hmm. Because the counter lamp is closer to your lamp. Right. Then if you have a counter line all the way on, the, on your lower back, like in the SF2, the breathing is more natural with a rebreather than with an open circuit. Open circuit, you get some help from the uh, middle pressure. When you breathe, you get air. Here is more natural. You are the one, you are the pump 
you're yeah. pumping and moving the loop, hmm. the body. Cool. Verdict is safe. Yeah. But you need to take problems seriously. You cannot cut corners or being sloppy and lazy. Even you have 10 dives, 10,000 on the rebreather, you must go through the checklist every single time. You cannot get like confident with the time and say, yeah, okay, that's fine. Right. That's what ends up happening a lot of times with accidents and tech diving. People that have a lot of experience and they stop doing those checklists. They stop being so... Yeah, consistent. Yeah. They're safe. They're, They're safe. safe. We're safe. Totally safe here. Totally safe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When I looked really quickly at the door, I thought that that tank was Abby, like up on her. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? No. <laughs> it's almost the same color, right? <laughs> Before we get to anything, <laughs> I have neighbors, this is so embarrassing.